basically, the first thing that we're going to do is talk about, let's talk about disability pensions. There are three pension systems in the state of New Jersey. The first is the Public Employee Retirement System, or PERS. The second is the Police and Firemen Retirement System. And then the final uh, system is the what's called the TPAF, which is the Teacher's Pension, Teacher Pension Annuity Fund. Uh, those are the three main ones. There's one for state police as well. Uh, but my focus usually is on those three. Um, and basically, when someone gets hurt or is disabled um, and they have a certain number of years in the system, um, they are eligible to apply for a disability pension. So there are two types of disability pension. There is accidental and there is ordinary. Now, uh, the easiest way to think about this, uh, although there are exceptions, but the easiest way to think about it is that accidental is um, if you have a specific accident at work and ordinary is if you have a disability that's not necessarily work related and that prevents you from returning to work. So there are exceptions in the sense that if you apply or if you got hurt at work, it could still just be an ordinary disability pension. But to just try and start with a bigger picture uh, and think about it, the distinction is one is work related, the other is not, okay? Now, when you apply for the disability pension, you have to be considered to be disabled from the performance of your regular or assigned job duties. So it's not that um, somebody uh, is totally and permanently disabled and will never work again, which quite frankly could happen, but um, the standard, the legal requirement is to demonstrate that you cannot perform your, what they call your past relevant work or basically the job you were doing, okay? So if you find that you are disabled and can't perform your prior job, then you are eligible to apply for the one of the disability pensions. So if uh, it's a work-related injury, then you would be trying to apply for an accidental disability. Um, now, depending on which system you're in, so teachers and public employees, accidental is 72.6% uh, tax-free, um, and if the employer participates in the state health benefit plan, the health insurance is a come with. Um, if you uh, are applying for ordinary, that's 46.3% of, um, if again, if you're uh, PERS or teachers, um, and it's the average of the highest three years in terms of what they're calculating is, as your salary. Police and fire is two thirds for accidental, 40% for ordinary. Again, if the employer uh, participates in the state health benefit plan, um, then um, the health insurance comes with in terms of the retirement, okay? So those are the two, um, two types of pensions. Those are the percentages uh, that you're eligible uh, or would receive if you apply for either one. Um, you may hear the heavy breathing here. I have my chocolate lab here with me this morning. Uh, so my, my guest here in the office, and uh, she is uh, looking for my attention here. So, um, so, um, so those are the two, the two things. Now, there are three main reasons. There are three main reasons why uh, someone who applies for the accidental disability pension is going to get denied. Um, there are others, but there are really three main reasons that the pension boards will deny someone. The first reason is that they are um, that they're the pension board's expert is going to indicate that uh, they are not disabled. So if the IME doctor says not disabled, so will the pension board until we prove otherwise. So the first reason they're going to deny is they're going to say not disabled. The second reason, uh, second main reason why someone gets denied the accidental is because they're going to say that the injury is an aggravation of a pre-existing condition. So, yes, we think that you are disabled, but we think that the disability is um, directly uh, or is not directly caused by the work accident, but we think it's an aggravation of a pre-existing condition. So, 
basically, you know, it's the kind of thing where either a 20 years ago, you had an injury to a knee and now you have the specific work accident and you have to have three surgeries. But because 20 years ago you said, oh, uh, here's my uh, prior knee injury, they say, oh, no, it's an aggravation of a pre-existing condition. Now, interestingly enough, I just argued in the appellate division a case where we had a client who had never had any medical treatment at all to their shoulder and had a specific work accident, couldn't go back to work. And but sure enough, a little bit older. So when they went and got the MRI, um, uh, there showed that there was some degenerative changes. And as a result, the board experts said, no, this is an aggravation of a pre-existing condition. So in that context, um, we were in the appellate division and we were arguing that, you know, that means that anyone of an older age would not be eligible um, for an accidental disability pension. They literally would prevent anyone who's over the age of 30 from getting an accidental disability pension if they allowed that theory to continue. So somebody, and by the way, the law says, and there's a specific case, it's called Petroselli, where it talks about the fact that <clears throat> there was someone who had absolutely no disability, asymptomatic, has a work accident, and it shows the same kind of degenerative process. So I think we're gonna be good on that case, but, um, but it's a matter of the fight, right? We got to go to the administrative law judge, who, by the way, ruled in our favor, went back to the pension board and the pension board switched again to just sort of satisfy their position. And then um, now I had to go to the appellate division to have, you know, to deal with that. So um, so not happy about that. Uh, but nonetheless, um, the second reason is they're going to say it's an aggravation of a pre-existing condition. The third reason that nobody's going to get denied is because they're going to say, that the incident that happened is not one that they're going to consider undesigned and unexpected. So basically what they're saying is that the corrections officer uh, who has the ever loving bejesus knocked out of him because he gets assaulted by an inmate. Well, that's just something they should have anticipated. It's part of the job. So therefore they're not eligible for accidental because that incident is not undesigned and unexpected well you know say what you will and yeah i guess it's an understanding that that could happen but i don't know that anyone goes to work any given day and says oh i'm ready because i know today i'm gonna get i'm gonna get knocked around um uh yeah so you know so those are the kinds of situations i had a case where we had a, a corrections officer who was opening and closing a gate all day with no problem and then in the afternoon, uh, the gate jammed for some reason. And when it jammed, the shoulder popped out and needed surgery and couldn't go back. And they said, yeah, that's not, uh, initially the board said, no, not undesigned and unexpected. It's an old place, you should have anticipated that. And of course the appellate division said, no, that's exactly the undesigned and unexpected. So, you know, you get a sense that um, the judges sometimes more often the public employee and the teacher boards, they just are refusing to get it because I think they think it's their money uh, and that they're, you know, somehow the, the keeper of the, of the goods, you know, that kind of thing. So whatever. Um, but that's the third main reason why people get denied their benefits.